Hello and welcome to PM Studios, a small basic tutorial number 13. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys about arrays. Arrays are a very crucial part of programming, and once you get into the, the more taxing object-oriented languages, they'll come in handy in multiple situations. Um, so basically, um, I'm going to go ahead and start explaining uh, arrays, because it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a, an experiment to fathom. Basically the easiest way to understand arrays is if I were to explain it as in safety deposit boxes in a bank. So let's say you go and buy four safety deposit boxes sitting all next to each other on the same row. Now you have access to all four of these and you can put your own individual items inside the boxes. Um, we're gonna go ahead and number these zero one, two, and three. The reason why we start at zero instead of one is because machines read zero as a first number. Zero always has a value in code. Um, the only thing that does not have value is the number nil, n-i-l. That's a, something else for another time. So basically you have access to all four of these safety deposit boxes and inside them you can put your items. So say we had uh, gold bars that we wanted to put in each of our safety deposit boxes. You can put, for instance, three in one, two in the other, six in one, and three in the other. So now each of these have their own independent variables which with, with which we can call on. Now, for instance, say you walked in to the bank one day and you told them that you wanted to go ahead and get the bars that are out of your safety deposit in box number one. So you'd just call it like you normally would in the bank. You'd go safety deposit box one. And when you do that, it's going to produce the number two. And let's say you append something. Say you wanted a C safety deposit box one so that you could add two more to it. So you can just change that to four. Safety deposit box equals four. And now those variables would equal three, four, six, and three. Um, this is a very basic explanation. You can store any form of variable in there. For instance, if you wanted to store the variable of safety deposit box one into another array, or say you wanted to get a picture online, you could do image list dot mm, mm, get height of image, and then you put your image name in there. And then safety deposit box or our array, this slot in the array would hold the height of the image, but only this one. This comes in handy when you have multiple variables for one specific thing, and you need to keep track of them all. For instance, if you were to uh, need to keep track of coordinates on a vehicle in one of your games, so that you could create collisions, or the possibilities are limitless, but you you do understand. Um, I would I would hope. So let's go ahead and move on to what are called two-dimensional arrays now. Now, two-dimensional arrays are when you implement a second dimension into your arrays. And I'm going to go ahead and draft that up here real fast. Okay. So here we have two dimensions of an array. Um, it's not necessarily as the size that I wanted it to be, but for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this. Now, a two-dimensional array is, say, you now have not just one row, but multiple row of safety deposit boxes. You're expanding on your gold bars. So you would need multiple rows of safety deposit boxes, and you can call on any of these, and the function you would use to do so is, say, you wanted to call on this one with the 8 in it. What you would do is you type in, well, we can see that the first safety deposit box is 2, so SDB. And then the second safety deposit box is 1, so SDB 2, 1, or vice versa, whichever you feel you can arrange it as. Um, basically, arrays can solve most problems. Um, you can put as many dimensions as you like onto the array, but you need to keep in mind that most 
that for every dimension that you apply on, it's twice as slow. And that being said, with most programs, there are a few exceptions, but with most programs, you will be able to you will be able to solve all of your issues with arrays with only two dimensions. If you need more, then that's perfectly fine. But like I said, you can mostly solve most of your problems with two dimensions. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to a working example of how to function with arrays. So let's say, for instance, we have an employee. So we need employee. Actually, let's go ahead and set it up in a text window. This should do just fine. Employee is zero because he is the first employee we're putting into the array. And again, if you don't want to start it at zero, you can most certainly start it at any number that you like. But it's good practice to start it at zero for when you move on to object-oriented programming. So, employee zero. Now we're going to add one subcategory, a two-dimensional array. So we're going to do that as first name. And his first name, we're going to call him John. And then for our next part of the two-dimensional array, we're going to give him a last name. Now, you could do this in three dimensions and make the second dimension name and the third dimension name, or la first and last. So you'd have employee zero, then the second dimension is name, then the third dim dimension is his first or last name. But it gets kind of cluttered, and it slows down the program every time you add a th another dimension to it. So if you can avoid doing that, then you should. So John Doe. And what else would we want to get from an employee? We'd want to get his birth date. You do want to put all this stuff in quotes unless you wanted to do mathematical equations on the stuff you're entering. And for the sake of just making things easy, he is born on January 1st of 2001. And then for the last thing, we're going to get his position. Or his title, whichever one you want to call it. And let's go ahead and say that he's the general manager. Now, if you wanted to query this, all you'd have to do is type in text window dot write line. And there you go. It'll pull up all the information. Let me go ahead and see if that functions correctly. Yeah, see, it pulls up the first name, which is John, the last name, which is Doe, the birthday, which is 010101, and the position, which is general manager. So as you can see, there's a lot that we can do that's very potential. Um, we can go into more complex examples, which I plan on doing in future tutorials, of how we can store ever-changing variables in the arrays so that we can um, go further and utilize even more of their power. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please look forward to watching tutorial 14, which I will go more in depth with this. I just wanted to create a very basic, um, a very basic tutorial on how to understand arrays, so that I don't confuse anyone when I go into the next one, because I am going to have to go fast. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you next time.